Now, one of the areas I haven't covered very much was the, actually the fixation process. And when you read, your eyes go across the page. They stop for about a quarter of a second. You process a bit of information and you move. How many of you see how your eyes move across the page when you read? You don't. When I first got into working with kids, I thought if I had them track a ball, I could get their... I mean, a kid who couldn't track a ball, I'd have really trouble reading. Now, number one, reading is a very, very intriguing process. The better your language ability, the more handicaps you can carry into the reading process and get away with it. Okay? Because really, a good reader doesn't read every, have to read every word. Okay? And there's also, actually, there's different ways to read. You can scan or you can read for real detail. I mean, if you're reading something that is a contract that is uh, your whole life is tied into that contract, you better not scan it. <laughs> okay? And so you'd read it very, very carefully. And really, really bright people, a lot of times, will take a very difficult thing and they'll read it out loud. How many of you know that? So it is that one of the things that happens. There's a lot of different dimensions to reading, but there are some real critical things to be very efficient. One of them is efficient fixations. If your eyes move across the page and miss the word, I mean, have you listened to kids read and they get lost when they go from the beginning of one line back to the beginning of another? Okay? And that's very much like a, if I close my eyes and reach out and touch the tip of my nose. It's knowing where my nose is in space, knowing where that word is in space. And it's probably a cerebellar process, <laughs> okay, to know. Now, the brain gets information of position of objects in space from the muscles of the eye. The uh, control of your eyeball is really important. And one of the, like, just to give you a little uh, picture of the fixation process, um, I want you to count the dots on that chart there. Is it easy? Okay, pretty easy, okay. Now, now when you count these, I want you to be aware of how you count them as well as how many are there. As soon as you get it, somebody holler out the number. All right, now, um, how did you do it? Okay, you did it by twos. Anybody do it by more? Huh? How did you do it? You did it this way, but how many did you get at a time? Twos or ones or what? Huh? Now let me just give you a little structure on this. Count it by threes. Now switch and count it by twos. Now switch and see if you can get fives. You see, I can use this as an activity to develop your perceptual span. See how you can switch it? Mm -hmm. Choose. And actually what you're after is flexibility in the, in the things, okay? Mm -hmm. And actually what you do, let's see what, you, what happened here, and that is that you looked at this. There was too much for you to handle at one bite. So you had to break it into elements you could process. So you had to know where you were, where you'd been, where you hadn't been. So you had to maintain the overall structure while you dealt with the elements of that structure. And that's a, a very, one of your very basic visual processes. And David Norton and Lawrence Stark back in the um, early 60s did a study where they had people look at pictures and objects and they picked up their eye movements and graphed them on a copy of the picture. Well, one of the things they did is they gave subjects a hundred pictures, different levels of difficulty, and had them try to remember the, uh, the um, pictures. Then they sorted them and put fifty, put a hundred more with um, di that they hadn't seen. So they had them sort on the pictures that they'd seen previously, put in one pile, and the pictures that they missed, they put in another pile they hadn't seen. And the pictures that they had seen previously and recognized the second time through the scan pattern was the same. The pictures that they 
um, looked at it and didn't recognize the second time their scan pattern was different. So their conclusion was that the scan pattern was the key to visual retrieval, okay, to memorizing what you um, what you see. And actually, one of the things this group of kids that I had in my class, we were visualizing words, and I had this program learning system where I would have them uh, run the have put the spelling list. I would uh, say the word, pause long enough for them to write it. They didn't write it the first time. They just looked at the word and saw it as whole. Well. Then I'd spell it out loud and they'd trace it. And then I'd say, close your eyes and you can see the word just as you've written it. When I first put that program together, I said, close your eyes and try to see the word just as you've written it. I took a course from this Dr. Moore, who was one of the worst teachers I ever had, and all he wanted you to do was to regurgitate word for word what a book said. And so I was going to take one of his tests, and so I sat down and studied and studied and studied and studied, and I got to the point where I could visualize the things that I thought I would need. I went in and aced the test, but I came back, and without knowing it, when I gave that, made the tape for the spelling, I said, close your eyes and you can see the word just as you've written it. One kid raised his hand and said, Mr. Belga, when you say I can see it, I can. And that same kid, when we were visualizing words, and one of the things we did with words is we tapped them out, like you can take Texas and modalities, and these are the, that's one word and this is the other. Now which sequence matches which word? The, okay, see modality would be the second one. And the, but the, the rhythm of a word is actually the vowels in the word. The vowels carry the rhythm. And so we, we um, um, that's one of the things we doped out. And the other thing that this kid found is that when you visualize a word, if you tap it out and then you make that many fixations, it's much easier to visualize it. Okay. And so the, what happens is that you're able to bring up what, what you, but you're after, on these fixation activities, you're after developing control.